Hey guys, Dr. Betts here. Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. Now we will be talking about 9.5 pH and the pH scale. Well, to understand pH, you must first understand this concept. The auto-ionization of water, also known as the KW. K is just a mathematical expression for uh, equilibrium. We don't really talk too much about that. Uh, we, will work, we will be working with K. It's basically a, what they call a... It's an equilibrium constant. That's what they're known as. And basically, it just tells you about the concentrations of things. Um, you can relate it to the concentration of this, concentration of that. And you can use it to calculate the concentration of um, certain things in solution, depending on the equilibrium. Uh, Kw is specifically the equilibrium constant of water. So it's just a mathematical expression. We're going to use it a little bit. Um, not too much. Not want to get too crazy with it, but we are going to use it. But first, before we get into that, Let's talk about the auto-ionization of water. Here we have two liquid molecules of water. One molecule will react with the other. And when that occurs, one water will behave as an acid and one will behave as a base. That's just what happens, okay? One water will react with the other and you'll get hydroxide and hydronium in solution, okay? This is known as the auto-ionization of water. And what we have from this is we can get Kw. Kw. Now, Kw is this multiplied by that. But I'm, you're probably wondering, what are we looking at? Well, take a look at these square brackets that I've just drawn and the x. This is shorthand for concentration of X in molarity. That's what that shorthand means. Okay? So what we have here is the concentration of a hydronium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide. And that happens to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. That is Kw. Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And I'll give you that on an exam. I'll even give you the expression for Kw if you need it. It's not a big deal. Okay? But that's what things are. Now, we know that in pure water, the concentration of hydronium equals the concentration of hydroxide. We know that to be true. And we know that this is equal to... Uh, let, me do it, let me do it a different way. And we know in pure water, H3O plus... Hydronium's concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. That's absolutely pure water. Okay? Not acidic, not basic, pure. The concentration of hydronium is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. And we know from here, in pure water, that's also equal to the concentration of, hy of hydroxide. So in pure water, the concentration of OH minus 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. That's pure water. Okay? That's absolutely pure water. Now, let's look at the Kw expression some more. We know that this is the Kw expression, and we know that it's equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. We know that to be true. That's the constant. Think of it as a constant. If I told you that the concentration of hydronium was, I'm just going to make a number up, say... 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4, what is the concentration of OH minus? That's easy. That's very easy because we know this expression right here. Kw equals the concentration of H3O plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus. This right here is what we want to solve for. So simply divide both sides by hydronium. Concentration of OH minus equals Kw divided by concentration of hydronium. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4. Let me grab my calculator. 
handy dandy calculator. One exponent 14 negative divided by 2.5 exponent 4 negative equals 4 times 10 to the negative 11 is the concentration of OH minus. It's just that easy, guys. I mean, there's nothing. I, th I think Boyle's law and uh, and dilution stuff is harder than this. This is, I think, pretty simple. So, you know, we'll go over this a little bit on the assignment or whatever, but this is pretty straightforward stuff. I don't think anyone here had a hard time with it because you guys are all pretty smart. Now, pH. pH. We're going to talk about pH now. pH. I think I have another slide for this. Hold on. Ah, yes, here it is. pH. pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H3O+. Plus. That is pH. Okay? That is pH. Now, we know that in pure water, this concentration equals... 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. We know that to be true. Okay? So if you plug this number into there, you will get 7.0. Notice, 7, 7. Tells me about the exponent. Ah, that's pretty interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. What if, what if, what if we had an acidic solution? What if we had an acidic solution? If it's acidic, we know that if it's acidic, and here's the deal, if a solution's acidic, its concentration of hydronium must be greater than this. So the concentration must be greater than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. Because if it's, if it's pure water, it's just 7, right? 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So, for example, 3.0 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, well, let's plug that in. Let's plug that in. Um, 3.0 exponent 2 negative logarithm. Where's my logarithm? There it is. Oh, so that's equal to a pH equals 1.5. Huh. pH is below 7. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 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 So now that's telling me something. This number is below 7, right? This number is 7, and that's pure water. So it appears, and it's absolutely true, to be honest with you, that if you have a pH of 7, you're what they, what they call neutral. You are not acidic, you are not basic, you're neutral. If your pH is below 7, which 1.5 certainly is below 7, you are acidic. Ah, you're acidic if you're below 7. What about basic? Okay, let's try basic. Let me get myself some room here. Let me throw my, let me throw my face up here. There we go. If you're basic... The concentration of hydronium is less than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. That's just the truth of it all. The concentration of hydroxide is increasing at that point, so the concentration of hydronium must go down. Or, oops. Ah. Sorry, guys. Try that again. There we go. Well, I guess I lost all my stuff there. Well, remember we had acidic here, right? And it was pH equals 1.5 for pure water. pH equals 7.0. And now for basic water, concentration of hydronium is less than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. For example, 3.1 times... 10 to the negative 13. 10 to the negative 13 certainly is much lower than se negative 7, right? So let's do the calculation here. 3.1 exponent 13 negative logarithm of that. 
we're looking at a pH equal to 12.5. A lot higher than seven, right guys? A lot higher than seven. Hmm, well that tells me a lot actually. I know that pure water is neutral. It has a pH of seven. Acidic water has a concentration of hydronium that's greater than seven and the pH is lower than seven. Sorry, so let me say that again. I think I misspoke. In uh, pure water, concentration of hydronium is 1.0 times 10 to the negative seven, pH of seven. In acidic water, the concentration of hydronium is greater than 1.0 times 10 to the negative seven. The pH is lower than seven. In basic water, the pH is higher than seven. Okay, so if you had a pH of 6.9, you're acidic. If you have a pH of 7.1, you're basic. Okay, that's how it works. And if you have a pH of 7, you're neutral. You're neither acidic nor are you basic. Pretty neat, huh? And this is a fun little slide to talk about real quick of uh, some of the things in our life that we may have. Oven cleaner, extremely basic. Hair remover, extremely basic. Ammonia, soap, baking soda, cleaners are basic. Um, saliva, milk, acidic. Coffee, urine, tomato, you know, soft drinks. Basic, or pardon me, acidic. So in our life, there's a whole gambit of things that run between acidic and basic that we use that are part of our everyday life. It's just, they're very common. Acids and bases are extremely common. What you're going to notice is that most, if not all of our food is either slightly acidic or very acidic. Uh, most of our cleaners are basic. And we don't normally like bitter things to eat. We like more of a sour, acidic flavor, okay? Things like vinegar are acidic. Oranges and lemons are acidic. We eat those things like they're going out of style because they're delicious, right? Now, what you want to do right here on this slide, I haven't given you a chance yet to calculate a pH. Grab out your calculator and try to calculate the pH from here. The, your answer should be positive 1.3. Now, in class, when I see you in class, we'll try this on the assignment to make sure you can do it. Uh, but try now with your calculator. Now, the trouble with these kind of questions, calculating pHs and stuff like that, students have a hard time because they can't use their calculator. It's always a calculator mistake. And I can't help you on exams, but I can help you during our assignments. So make sure you try to do this right now and in the assignment in class time. Make sure you can use your calculator. Okay? Manufacturers are all different. So try right now. Pause the video. So you get the right answer. All right, welcome back. Let's move forward. 9.7. So that's the end of that chapter, uh, part of the chapter. We're going to come back later on and we're going to do um, amino acids. Amino acids are, are interesting because they have weak acids and weak bases in the same molecule. So we'll talk about that later on. Now with that, I want to wish you guys good luck and good chemistry.